Well, hello. My uh, regular listeners will know that I'm very interested in all kinds of uh, what are unfairly known as alternative therapies. But I've come across something recently which is fascinating. It's a diagnostic tool more than a therapy, and it's called iridology. So two of my friends are heavily involved in this, and they run a company called Planet Wellness, which I think gives you a fair feel for what it's all about. And as you know, I am very keen on good diet and treating the whole body. Mm. So let me hand over to my two guests who are called Petrina and Ronald. Delari Simpson, have I said that right? Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay, Perfect. excellent. Perfect. Um, Ronald has got years and years of experience in nutrition. He developed his interest aged about 14. And Ronald is very nearly 76, although you wouldn't think that to look at him. And he tells me that he feels 45. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And Petrina and he met about 10 years ago. Mm. She's always interested in health and nutrition, but she has learned all about iridology. And so this is what the two of them practice. So mm. it's truly fascinating. There is all sorts of information to learn. So let me ask you, Ronald, um, what is iridology? Um, iridology, um, it comes, it actually derived from the word iris. Uh, that's I-R-I-S, right? Now, in the eye, in when you look at somebody's eyes, right, you've got you've got different colors. So basically, you've got brown, you've got blue, you've got hazel, you've got dark brown, you've got black. These are different colors in the eyes, right? And so apparently, iris comes from the Egyptian, old Egyptian, meaning rainbow. And I'm and I'm, and I've seen the research which indicated that the very ancient Egyptians, some of them had purple eyes, purple eyes, right? Mother. And 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 but for some reason that particular line of the Egyptians died off. See, because because you see, our eyes come from our forefathers and forefathers and forefathers and forefathers, and forefathers right? Now, what's also fascinating is that in the world of eyes or irises, three percent of the world population got blue eyes. Three percent only has got blue eyes, and that's the Norwegians, the Finns. The Alaskans, the Northerners, they live in the cold countries. They, they have blue eyes. And apparently they came from the same ancestor. Amazing, isn't it? Right? But how can we use this information about the eye yes. to diagnose yep. health issues? Well, what happened is that, the first of all, I need to explain that there's, 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 there's a genetic tendency. If somebody's got blue eyes, their genetic tendency is to have problems with their lymphatic system. OK, and if you've got brown eye, they have a tendency to have a liver problem. If you've got azel eyes, they have a tendency to have liver and lymphatic system problems. All right. So now in the eyes, all right, there's about 80 fibers, 80 fibers in the eyes. All right. What's fascinating, but that's what I've never been a skeptical person because that, that's you close the door. Now. I've been a logical person. My dad was engin all engineers. We think logically, right? I discovered quite a long time ago, about 1976, that in the human body, 28,000 signals come from your spine, the nerves in your spine, and feeds to the optic nerve into your eyes. 28,000 signals every single day, right? And those signals mark the eyes a certain way. And then we can look at the, we, when you take the photograph, we take, we're the only ones in the world that do that. We do five photos of each eye. So we're looking straight left, right, up and down, and then we can analyze the entire iris, which is the, the colored part of the eye, and the sclera, which is the whites of the eyes. Now, by using those two organs, okay, we can tell exactly the level of toxicity, the level of stress on your lungs, your kidneys, your liver, your thyroid, and so on and so on and so on. It's an incredible sign. We can even see pain in your back. From this from the cervical area to the thoracic area the lumbar area we can see pain in your legs we can see uh, circulation problems we can see the toxicity in the colon it's all in the eyes <laughs> amazing isn't it 
It yeah. is amazing. And what other professions are aware even that iridology exists? I'd say I'd say the medical profession is so far beyond on this. It's, it's scary, right? And it, the amazing part is, if you went to a doctor about 40 years ago, he would look in your eyes. He would look in your eyes. He would look in your tongue. He would look in your ears, right? But today, they don't do that. Now, why did they do it back then? Because back then, they were allowed to do it, then they did it. Now, it's all been streamlined. 40 months. years ago? It's 40 years ago. 30, 40, oh, 40 years ago. That makes yeah. more sense, yeah. yeah. 30, 40 years ago. They, they were doing, they look at someone's eyes, and they could actually see things in the eyes. But where we're so much more advanced, We've 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 engineered people that given us the best cameras in the world for the eyes, right? Now imagine a Big Mac, a Big Mac uh, computer. We can take the iris, which is about that big, and we can expand that to the size of the screen, 15-inch screen. And with that, we can see the incredible detail in the eyes, right? And within about 20 minutes of photographs, we can we can just we can diagnose what problems, stress levels, we can see stress rings contraction furrows, like I said, toxicity, lung problems, bronchial bronchi problems, A fever, we can see all of that in the eye. And then we use that to then recommend what to eat, what to drink. We, we've also come across certain yeah. chiropractors, the more modern ones, who are actually are aware of this science as well, yes. iridology, and they yes. actually use it. And in fact, Ronald has a story. He's um, That's how, how he actually got involved in iridology as well. <laughs> exactly. he, he injured his back years ago. He went to a chiropractor. And before the chiropractor actually looked at his back or adjusted his back, he actually did iridology on Ronald yes. in those days. Yes. So Ronald went to a chiropractor for a back issue. And... That's right. Yes, yes. What I mean, I'd, I'd, worked, I'd worked with the Special Forces and Infantry in Vietnam, carrying big packs up to about 80 pounds, right, with water bottles on top of it. And my and I was I was very very strong. I built myself strongly. But what happened at the age of thirty? The amount of luggage I was carrying on my back uh, earlier, like I started playing my in the in the coccyx area in the lower lumbar, right? And so I heard about this chiropractor called Tony Human, right? That was his name, Tony Human. Mm -hmm. What look? I'm going to tell you this is fascinating. So I went to him and I thought, well, he's going to palpate my back. He's going to check my back from the top to bottom, and he's going to adjust me. To my amazement, he said, sit down on the, on the couch. So I said, don't lie down, sit down. So I sit down, and he gets his torch out, and he looked in my eyes, right? And he kept going back and forth to this drawer. In the drawer, he had a chart, okay? Just show him the chart. Called, it's called an Aridol chart. Aridol chart, like that, like that. see? Oh, yes. Like that, okay? Now, this the chart he had was black and white, okay? But I didn't know that he was looking and, at the chart. And the back area is, is the back. Yeah. in the chart over here. Yeah, can you see? I see. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, he was looking at the chart, but I didn't know it was a chart at the time. Like he opened the door and kept looking five minutes in each eye. And then to my amazement, I said to myself, hang on, the back, the back is from the neck area here. So it goes all the way down. There's 24 vertebrae. He went straight to my lower back, straight there. I went, wow, how did you know that? So anyway, I let him, and then he went there and he adjusted. All right. And then at the end of it, I said to him, Tony, I said, you're a chiropractor. What are you doing looking in my eyes? He said, iridology. And I went, what is that? He said, I can look in the iris and it's clearer and I can tell where your back is out. Right. Went, yeah, because that's the point. We often suffer referred pain, don't we? So yes. the actual source of the pain isn't yes. what we think it is. Correct, correct. And, for example, I learned through him and other people in the cervical area, which is the top, you know, the top seven vertebrae, the neck, part, top, yeah. the neck part, C3, which is cervical three, that is, when that vertebra is out, that will affect your vision. Wow. Isn't that yeah, isn't that amazing? So, you see, yeah. so, so if someone's got eye problems, whether it's a kid, adult, or whatever, you go to the car, you check the eyes first, you see the problem in that area, C3, and then you refer to a chiropractor, they adjust the neck, and guess what? Sometimes within weeks, the vision, re the vision reappears. Just by an adjustment, but, but picking up first that the C3 is out. That's Absolutely. how you pick it up. Amazing, isn't it? So I've got people off glasses through that, off glasses, by, by adjusting the C3. And once you adjust the C3, that's the nerve supply. See, once the, it's, like, it's like a nerve supply. The C3 is there. Imagine it's pinched now. That is then blocking the optic nerve and causing vision problems. And right? these people don't even realize that they've no, got they're they're back. Back. they don't. They don't. And, and you know, I think even more fascinating, 
sometimes when babies are born, the midwife or the doctor might be a bit brutal and they grab all of their neck and pull them out too hard. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they, have, they actually turn the C3 off. They, 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 they squeeze it too hard. And then the baby's born with a C3 already dislocated. Right? And it could be three years, four years later, and all of a sudden you see the eyes turn. They turn inside the wrong way. And they go, all right, go to the optometrist. Get Which your is called a squint, them. right? Yeah, a squint. And, and then that's, that's caused because at the time of birth, the vertebrae, the C3 vertebrae were twisted the wrong way. It might have been at two millimeters. And that's enough to block the actual optic nerve supply. Bang, here the eyes gone. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's fascinating. And you've got an interesting story about migraines. Migraines. Yes, migraines. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Migraines, yeah. uh, about, about yeah. I think it was five years ago now, yes. we helped a young nurse. She was about 23 at the time. Mm. She had been suffering for from migraines, very severe migraines for about 10, 10 years, yes. over 10 years, mm. to the extent that she could not work at all. She, she would always uh, be, be calling on for sick leave because it was so bad, it was just uh, affecting her concentration and her physical performance itself. So she went to various so-called top surgeons and top specialists yes. in three countries, UK, France, and Belgium. And they all said she had a tumor in her brain and they wanted to operate. Mm. Now, she was a recovery nurse and, and still is a recovery nurse. And she knew that she didn't want to be on the patient side of the recovery. Yeah. She was a nurse looking yeah. after people. So they yeah. knew. Yeah. So fortunately, her dad knew of us. And her dad said, as a last resort, come and see Ronald Petrina. So she did. Last resort. Thank you very much. Last resort. Last resort. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, to avoid surgery, yeah. right? Yeah. So as a last resort, she came to see us. And we actually saw that the so-called tumor that all the specialists were seeing through the x-rays was actually toxicity, severe toxicity in her brain area. Yeah. Why? From eating a lot of fast food, processed foods, because she was working long hours late. She'd be too tired or too exhausted to actually cook or prepare a meal properly. Or salad so, or whatever. So know? she would actually go yeah. to the fast foods and eat a lot of that. Yes. And all that over the years built up the toxicity. Yes. Mm. So without, without recommendations, she was able to get rid of her migraines completely yeah. over a couple of months yeah. following up our recommendations. Yeah. Her, her father, her father was a very smart royal photographer. That, that's what he, that's what he, he did photographs of the royals and he met us to the, on the TV station. And then he said, he said, to her, Do, so you've been to all these doctors in Belgium and so on and so on. And they all said, we've got to drill into your brain to, 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 to get rid of the tumor. And what had happened, the, the rubbish, the junk, the chemicals from all this fast food had penetrated to the blood-brain barrier here and had deposited just above the palate. And, and it was like built, it was like a murky brown color right there in that spot in the eye. And, and so we thought, hang on, we'd ask what she'd been eating. We said, hang on, it's, it's a buildup of chemicals from the food it's, and the sugar, the sugar levels as well. So, and, and she was smart. She was a recovery nurse and she'd seen the damage done by wrong operations. I mean, wrong operations, right? And she said, I don't want to get my brain drilled. So within, within six weeks of her treatment, the migraines completely disappeared. And she's never been sick since, never. Yeah. Amazing. Right. You're going to have a lot of people who want to get in touch with you. So, <laughs> in the show notes, I will put your contact details. Would you sure. just like to say it out loud? Yes. It's hello. If you can uh, send us an email at hello, H E L L O, at planetwellness.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's excellent. Thank you. And you do consultation calls as well, don't you? Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we I'll, do. I'll put the link in the show notes. Yeah. That's um, a schedule a call sort of link. Yes. yes. And um, yeah, something I should have said as I was introducing you, you won the Implementer of the Year and the Female Entrepreneur of the Year uh, Christmas last. Yes, we did. <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. We, yeah. We're especially a proud of the one which was the implementer of the year because, you know, we we totally recommend uh, solutions for, for, for those who actually see us. And we know that implementation is really the key key to actually getting to the results. Yes. So we're actually also walking the walk and, you know, talking the talk as well. 
in terms of winning because we, we know that when we implement, we actually achieve results. Yes. And likewise, those who come and see us, those who have a conversation with us, they will actually also get results, not only from our guidance, but they need to actually do their part as well. And that's really important. Yeah. yeah. As with anything, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, I can, if I can just add something really, really extremely powerful, right? For eight years, eight years, right? We've got a corner block, right? In, in like South, uh, South Chigwell and Ilford and so on. We've got a corner block. It's got quite a bit of land there. I managed to put 28 fruit trees in there. Um, 48 vegetables, 48, sorry, 48 herbs, medicinal herbs, and 16 vegetables, right? So I grow lettuces for patients. Our lettuce is so strongly organic. When you pick the lettuce, milk comes out of the leaf, right? Yes. Milk. And that milk is a medicine for the body. You see, when you take a lettuce from the supermarket, it might be three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, inorganic. It's, it's, it's brown already. Our lettuces are like you, within five minutes of taking it, it's all now. So we, we bring that, we, we actually teach patients how to grow their own food from our, from our garden here. And that's particularly relevant in these times yes, when yes. we're being threatened with food shortages yes, and all the rest exactly, of it. Yes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and I'll share a very powerful comment. I was taught by Peter Bennett, who was one of the biggest well-known organic gardeners in the world, right? He did broad acres as well as small, small holdings. Peter was an Englishman, and I met him in Adelaide, and I was so fascinated by what he taught me about organic gardening. He said to me, this, we're, talking, we're talking 1986 or something, and you know what he said to me? He said, Ronald, let me tell you something. He said, you're clever. He said, you come here every Wednesday night to the, to the course, every Saturday you come and work with me. He said, I'm going to tell you something. One day not too distant future, you'll be guarding your shop, your, your garden with a shotgun. He was talking about food shortages. He, he so, said that to me 30 odd years ago. Wow. He amazing. said, you'll be guarding your garden with a shotgun. And I, I, I can see that happening. I, I can too. I can. And I, yeah. It's horrifying. Yeah. I it think is. it's time that we wound up. Yes, okay. sure. And I just want to say... Um, all relevant information can be found in the show notes. Yes. And I recommend to people that they take a look at Planet Wellness on YouTube mm -hmm. because there is a wealth of information there about yes. almost every food you can think of and the <laughs> benefits of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah. And uh, mm. yeah, I think that's probably a good place to leave it and i think you guys are going to have to come back sometime because i know we've just scratched the surface yep absolutely absolutely this, this is the tip of the iceberg <laughs> so many thanks thank you thank so you, much Anne. really appreciate your input <laughs>